Many still remember the hit quadruple platinum single Sleep very fondly, but only a rare few know what happened to the artist behind the song. Ever since I was a child, Jigglypuff was praised as a musical genius for developing a brand new wave of sound so captivating that it made listeners submit to relentless fatigue. It was ASMR before ASMR. Lullabies before lullabies. Truly, Jigglypuff was a pioneer who paved the way for new auditory sensations. But after releasing just one single, Jigglypuff disappeared from the public's eye, never to be seen again. Nine years later, our team contacted Mount Moon Records for an interview with the elusive artist, but it turned out the label was a front for illegal activities. So we decided to track down the Pokemon ourselves. After many months of investigation, we were led to a quaint little village just outside Saffron City. Here we were witness to dozens of familiar faces, a group of once renowned musicians living together as a community. We saw Glenn Danzig draw water from the pump as his cats helped him carry pails full of water. Members of Alienette Farm were picking romaine tomatoes from a garden near the community soapbox to prepare dinner. We were able to catch up with Vitamin C and ask where we could find Jigglypuff. Her smile receded back into her face as she pointed quietly towards a rundown cottage near the stable. We thanked her and got ready to make our leave, but she stopped us briefly to hand us a box of earplugs and instructed us to apply them. We carefully made our way to the building in question and rang the bell. The boom operator took out his earplugs to listen for a response, but he slumped over on the doormat as soon as he did. I put my hand against the screen door and felt a slight vibration. It was probably Jigglypuff's voice that lulled our mic operator to sleep. I opened the door and we made our way inside. There, I saw it sprawled unconscious on the recliner. The years have not been kind to the Pokemon. At some point it evolved into Wigglytuff, scruffy, old and unshaven. Bits of vomit crusted over the edges of its lips. Piles of heroin needles laid on the shaggy carpet. I checked for its pulse. It was faint. Somebody suggested we call an ambulance. They went outside to make a call and left me in charge of the Pokemon. I looked back and inspected its condition. It wasn't pretty. It reminded me of my father. That look of complete despair like a rat trapped in a cage and just counting down its days. Before I knew it, I grabbed the cushion from the couch and approached the wiggly tuff. Its eyes fluttered open and saw me standing over it. It blinked once and closed again, as if it was ready for me. Ready for its curtain call. No more encore. No more pain. It didn't say anything, but I heard it clearly. It begged me to end it. So I obliged. I'm Salvation Army Hammer, and this has been another episode of Pokemon Facts. Stay tuned for more factual Pokemon facts. Have a wonderful Pokemon day.